this week the West Coast Main Line has been shut on the Trent Valley section between Stafford and Rugby. The closure has meant that Avanti West Coast has been operating a limited service on the West Coast Main Line with services diverted via Birmingham. Whilst LNR services from Crewe to Euston have been terminating at Stafford with a rail replacement bus taking passengers to Rugby. The work began on Saturday the 15th and is expected to take 9 days, with the line hopefully reopening on Sunday the 23rd of July. This closure is to allow HS2 to install a bridge that will eventually take HS2 trains underneath the West Coast Main Line just to the south of Litchfield at Fulton Wood. The bridge, which is 56 metres long and 19 metres wide, weighs 6,200 tonnes and has been constructed next to the West Coast Main Line over the past six months. During the nine-day blockade, Network Rail are also taking the opportunity to carry out renewals and will be installing new signalling equipment at College Junction, which will be commissioned next year. Network Rail will also be installing four kilometres of new track, replacing 3,300 railway sleepers and 3,000 tonnes of ballast. The decision to close a busy and vital section of the West Coast Main Line for nine days mustn't have been taken lightly, but the fact that engineers are able to install a 6,000 ton plus bridge within that time frame is no mean feat. Before the bridge could even be moved, workers had less than three days to excavate 15,000 cubic metres of earth and ballast to form a cutting right through the middle of the West Coast Main Line. This work has been hampered by the heavy rain that the UK has recently been experiencing. However, excavation work was carried out on schedule and the bridge moved into place within the expected time frame. As this video goes live, engineers should be working to backfill the bridge to bring the embankment back up to the original level so new ballast, sleepers and rail can be installed on the West Coast Main Line. The bridge itself may seem modest and not as widely celebrated as the Con Viaduct or the Approach Viaduct into Curzon Street Station, but the way in which it was constructed in order to reduce the impact on the West Coast Main Line, in my opinion, makes it an engineering marvel. At this point you're probably wondering how a 6,200 tonne bridge was moved into place in one go. The method itself is actually surprisingly simple, but has required some clever engineering. To move the bridge, so-called SPMTs or self-propelled modular transporters were used, which are multi-wheeled vehicles that can be combined to form large movable platforms. Each individual set of wheels can rotate and lift independently from the other sets of wheels. And the wheels can also turn in unison to steer and even spin the entire vehicle on the spot. To lift the bridge, several rows of SPMTs were moved into place underneath the bridge and then huge steel beams were installed. The beams were supported from below with steel supports resting on the SPMTs whilst the beams were slotted into pockets constructed within the bridge structure itself. To lift the bridge, the SPMTs rely on hydraulics connected to the wheel sets which push the beams up against the bridge to raise the entire structure in one go. The SPMTs then simply drive forward using hydraulic motors fitted to each wheel set. As well as using the hydraulics to lift the entire bridge, they can also be used to level a vehicle as it travels over uneven terrain, with the ability to self-level to keep the load stable at all times. Once the bridge was in its final position, the SPMTs were lowered. Then all that is left to do is to remove the steel beams and drive the SPMTs out from underneath the bridge. Now that the bridge is in place, construction teams have only a few days to backfill the embankment to build it up to the original height. Only then can new ballast, sleepers and rails be installed. The 56 metre length of the bridge structure means that no additional retaining walls are needed, which means backfilling can commence almost immediately after installation. To support the mammoth structure, piles were installed either side of the West Coast Main Line. However, the section that rests directly underneath the West Coast Main Line itself will be sat on Mercia Mudstone, which provides a solid base. The Fulton Wood Bridge isn't the only structure being constructed in the area, with the bridge for the South Staffordshire Railway Line also under construction. 
which has been constructed using a different construction method, which means the line will be closed for approximately 10 weeks. Just after the South Staffordshire line, engineers are preparing to construct yet another bridge that will take HS2 underneath the A38 and the southbound exit slip onto the A5127. The southbound slip has been closed since August last year and isn't expected to reopen until autumn winter this year. The three bridges in the area are significant as they are now amongst the most northerly structures being constructed for phase one currently. Beyond this, a junction connecting HS2 to the West Coast Main Line was supposed to be constructed at Handsacre that would allow HS2 to serve Stafford and Stoke-on-Trent. And it was originally intended that services to Liverpool, Manchester and Glasgow would use this link prior to the opening of Phase 2A. It was rumoured at the beginning of the year that this junction could be scrapped to save money, but when I spoke to somebody from HS2 Limited recently, they seem confident that the link will be constructed. This is, however, a decision for government, and with no official statement from the DFT regarding the link, it's difficult to know for certain if it will be constructed at all. I would say that in my opinion it would be wrong to cancel the link just to save a relatively small amount of money, especially as it would reduce the benefits for Stoke and Stafford. The site for the spur that leads to the West Coast Main Line seems active for now, but the Handsacre Junction site for the West Coast Main Line connection has been mothballed for the time being. So for now at least, it seems the West Coast Main Line, A38 and South Staffordshire Line bridges are the most northerly significant pieces of infrastructure that are being constructed until work recommences on phase to way from just north of Litchfield to Crewe.